This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at infrared spectroscopy. When molecules absorb energy in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum, it causes the bonds between the atoms to vibrate. This means the bonds stretch and bend. So here we have the electromagnetic spectrum and we can find infrared radiation between microwaves and visible light. The frequency of infrared radiation that is absorbed is measured as the number of waves per centimeter. This is known as the wave number. In table 26 of the data booklet, you'll find all the information that you need to solve problems for infrared spectroscopy. We have the type of bond, the organic molecule, the wave number, and the intensity. So here we have an example of an infrared spectrum, this one being for ethanol. On the y-axis we have transmittance, on the x-axis we have wave number. The infrared spectrum can be divided into two regions. On the right we have the fingerprint region, on the left we have the functional group region. The fingerprint region is the region of an infrared spectrum in the range of about 500 to 1500 centimeters to the negative one. This region of the spectrum is almost unique for any given compound. The fingerprint region can be used to identify an unknown compound by comparing with the infrared spectra of known compounds. The functional group region gives information about the type of bonds that are present within the molecule. Next, we'll use an infrared spectrum to identify the bonds in a molecule. So by looking at the wave number of the peaks and comparing to the data in the table, we can determine which bonds are present in the molecule. So this peak occurs at a wave number of approximately 2,900 centimeters to the negative one. By looking in the table, we can see that this wave number corresponds to a carbon to hydrogen bond. The next peak occurs at a wave number of approximately 3,300 centimeters to the negative one. So once again, we look in the table and this wave number corresponds to an OH bond in alcohols and phenols. So from this infrared spectrum, we've determined there's an OH bond and a CH bond in the molecule. And if we look at the structural formula for ethanol, we can see it contains an OH bond and a CH bond. The next infrared spectrum we look at is for ethanoic acid. The first peak we can identify occurs at a wave number of approximately 1,700 centimeters to the negative one. By looking in the table, we can see that this wave number corresponds to a carbon to oxygen double bond in aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, and esters. The second peak we can identify occurs at a wave number of approximately 3,000 centimeters to the negative one. Again, if we look in the table, this wave number corresponds to an OH bond in carboxylic acids. If we look at the structural formula for ethanoic acid, we can see it contains a carbon to oxygen double bond and an OH bond. A bond will only interact with infrared radiation if it is a polar covalent bond. Non-polar bonds do not absorb infrared radiation. In the data booklet, the last column tells us the intensity of the infrared absorption. The intensity depends on the dipole moment of the bond. Strongly polar bonds produce strong bands. Bonds with medium polarity produce medium bands. And weakly polar bonds produce weak bands. 